Well, it's finally here. Everybody take a breath. And say hello to the NFL season. Here come your Kansas City Chiefs. Welcome back to RGR, or for those of you that are new, welcome to RGR. I'm Ryan, and this is me going rogue on the NFL and the Kansas City Chiefs. If you're new, hit the sub, the notification, leave your comment, and a thumbs up if you like this video, or any of the others. It all works the same. Uh, pretty excited. Today's going to be a short one. I have a couple of new wrinkles coming for you that I want to let you know about. Tomorrow, I'm going to actually have a conversation online in video format with a film analyst from Arrowhead guys named Daniel Harms. You guys have probably seen him on Twitter, but he's going to join me here pretty quickly and we'll go through what we're looking at with the Jacksonville Jaguars as we get ready for this game to start off the 2019 season. As well, I'll have my game plan video starting back up for Friday. Check that out on Red Friday. The game plan for the Jacksonville Jaguars will be released. That said, there's a good bit of stuff going on. And I don't want to get into too many details yet because it's kind of topsy-turvy right now. They are just beginning practice. One good thing is they got Dion Yelder back. So they have a full complement of tight ends right now ready to go for week one. And the interesting thing is when they release their unofficial uh, depth chart, Yelder is the number two, supposedly. Whether or not Yelder is actually the number two, we'll have to find out as the week progresses. We'll see if he can handle practice first and foremost, but it's a good addition if they can have it. I think they're going to see a little bit of creative work with some of the tight ends. Like to see some two tight end sets. Going to see some, I think, jet motion, uh, jet sweeps. I think what they did in allowing some of that to come out in preseason is just to let everyone know what a staple that it's going to be in this version of Reed's offense this season. We're going to have matchups later in the week, but right now you have to feel like mostly healthy, uh, a little bit thin at corner. They are taking a risk, I have to say, and that's really the big discussion of the day. Let me know what you think about the cornerback position, because right now it's just Traverius Ward, Kendall Fuller, Bashad Breland, and rookie Rashad Fenton. And Fenton can play the nickel some. He's he's challenged with long speed. Uh, not a guy that you want to see playing significant snaps in week one against what are some pretty good receivers, including Westbrook, who I think is really going to be uh, tough to deal with for this team. Uh, that said, also, you have to be able to support the run against Fournette, and we'll get into that later in the week. But we don't have any inkling of what they intend to do about Mo Claiborne. He won't be back until the end of uh, beginning of week five. And so right now they're sitting with only four cornerbacks. And what that says is that they're going to rely on the capabilities of their safeties. And they like their safety group. Uh, with Thornhill, Matthew, your starting pair, and then Dan Sorensen coming in in the three safety set or in relief. We're going to see a lot of that in week one, I'm pretty certain. Because they're going to rely on Matthew and Thornhill in particular to play some corner snaps when they have to. Uh, they'll initially line up, but if, if you get that spread out four wide receiver set, one of those guys is going to have to drop down because they don't really have anybody else that they can just throw in there and expect to perform. Now, Jordan Lucas has had a little bit of experience. Even Armani Watts could probably come in and take some snaps uh, at the slot, uh, not at tight ends. I don't want to see him up against tight ends. But he can do a little bit of work. So they're banking right now on being able to go through this first week with the guys that they have. I don't think that precludes them from trying to secure another cornerback. And my guess is that's exactly what Brad Feach is working on right now. Whether that's going to happen anytime soon or not, we just don't know. It could be from tomorrow. It could be week six for all I know. But the need is there. No team wants to only go through the season with four cornerbacks. That's just not sustainable. There will be injury. There will be games that people will miss. And you have to have enough bodies at that particular position with that particular skill set in order to fight attrition and make it through a full NFL season. So expect an acquisition at some point, whether it's a signing, Herb Miller's still out there, Demontre Wade's still out there, maybe it's somebody they know, maybe it's somebody they covet, and they're just working on a deal. But we'll know when we know, and not until then. A couple other little notes where we are right now as they begin practice for week one. Now we heard that Andy Reid considers Damian Williams a starter, and Shady McCoy a starter. That's kind of a nice thing to have. And at the end of the day, 
a cheap secondary player, whether it's shady right away or not. I don't expect them to split carries right away, but I do expect McCoy to play in the first game and get some touches. Uh, clearly, he's in shape. He's been playing all preseason. Um, no noted injuries or anything nagging of that kind of sort. So I think they're going to be in okay shape there. I want to see what they do with Miko Hardman, and we'll talk about that in the pregame show. But there are a number of things going. The big takeaway is this, this Storm Dorian has slowed. And what used to be landfall and a really soaking rain that was supposed to be Wednesday turned into Thursday. Now they're talking Friday, maybe late Friday. All that means is that there's a possibility that the field is, is not in very good shape. It could be very, very wet. Uh, the storm could be still over them when they try to play this football game. It's not out of the realm of possibility that they have to move it. Evidently, there's a plan in place, but no one's telling us what that is. So I'll be very interested. So keep an eye on the weather as we go through, and we'll just kind of play by ear from there. Now remember, I do have a video tomorrow, a conversation with Phil Mantle and Dan Harms. I think that's going to be great. I think you guys will dig it. Uh, and then we'll have the game plan on Friday. So I look forward to all that. Let me know what you think of this and what you're concerned. Leave your comments below. Leave that thumbs up if you like what I'm doing. And if you're not subbed, consider doing that so you can join in the conversation. The push is almost over, folks. We're going to make it to 10K, and I thank you for all of your help. Make sure you check out these videos here, and I'll check you next time.